thank you very much um, for this opportunity to interview this icon um, called Noel Dexter, a multifaceted man who it would take me um, perhaps about three months to um, interview properly. And so you could get a good feel for him. But I'm going to be doing this within a 20 minute um, slot. So. Of course, he doesn't like to speak, but when you get him started, he, he, he can do a, a, who was it, who couldn't stop? Peter, who doesn't like to talk. <laughs> okay, Mr. Dexter, it is my greatest pleasure to be interviewing you um, for this um, event. I, and everybody knows that we go a long way back. So I don't have to say very much about the relationship we have had in, in, in the music world. But I just want to ask you at the outset to share a little with us about your early beginnings, um, your exposure, the influences um, that you have had in Port Antonio, in the parish of Portland, which is close to your heart in Jamaica. Thank you very much, Leith. Now, I am probably the only person being interviewed who came from the country, <laughs> from rural Jamaica. I, I was born in Port Antonio, and that's where I spent all my early days and up to high school. Now, I, to tell you how I was influenced, I have to tell you what Port Antonio was like then. The population was much smaller than it is now. And it, it was a time when a lot of people didn't have radios. So there was a lot of creative music making in town. There was a lot of, there were lots of mentor bands which moved from bar to bar, from shop to shop, playing the music. And I grew up in, I spent my days mostly in a place called Market Square. Market Square is where the Senate office, where the market is, a few shops owned by some Syrians and Chinese. And it was our playground. Our ch as children, we played in, in the Senate office. I, I, I go back much further than a lot of this everybody has interviewed, because I can remember being in Port Antonio after the war. And I remember following a crowd of people singing war over, war over, war over, war over. And they had an effigy of Hitler, which, which they carried down to Bonebrook. And they burnt it. <laughs> I remember that music very clearly. And then I am um, in Market Square, we had a lot of music. That's where the revivalists came down to have their meetings at night. And the Salvation Army over one side on a Saturday evening. It was the place where the men who sold jerk, jerk pork came down from Boston every Thursday. And it was a place where political meetings were held. My father had a bread shop. We sold, not the, not the um, bread in Port Antonio that was wrapped in brown paper, but we sold bread which came from Kingston on the train. And it was bread from W.E. Powell, I think and people would line up and wait for bread to come off the train. I remember the first night we had sliced bread. Um, and the news got around that there was sliced bread. The night following, there was stampede. <laughs> Every, everybody wanted some sliced bread. <laughs> and um, I, my grandmother owned a shop on the other side of the thing, just opposite, square, opposite where my father was. And she sold confectionery. <laughs> <laughs> Gizada and dr coconut drops. 
And what's more, they sold ice. Every time I tell my students about people buying ice by the pound, there's a guy who had a, who had a saw, and he would have, he'd ask for two pounds of ice, and he would cut it and weigh it, and give it to you. So I go way back. But more than that, I lived at a place about a mile from town called Red Hazel. We call it Red Hazel, it's spelled Red, Red Hassle. And that little district produced quite a number of people who were well known. Beverly Crary came from there. Professor er Edward Ball came from there. And quite a number of other well known people came from there. For every time people, when they, so, they used to say, when I meet anybody, you know, say, everybody come from Portland. <laughs> this isn't so, but quite a number of us grew up in that area. At Christmas, there was John Cano, which came down into the square. And though, although I was afraid of them up to 14 years old, I remember Edward, who came from the hill just above where I lived. And I'd wait to see him come down in his junk on a costume with a tash and lace round the pants, foot, and a lot of mirrors on the headdress because he played, he played a red, what they call red Indian? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I look forward to that. Now, on the other hand, my mother sent all of us, her three children, to piano lessons. And we all, we all went to three different, we went to three different piano teachers. Just telling you how many piano teachers there were in, in Portland. And we didn't go to the top one, Mrs. Darcy Tavares, who entered students for Royal School exam. I went to one of the Smallwoods book, piano teacher. <laughs> and I didn't start out with her, but when I was about 10, 11, my father brought a piano home were big mists and Hamlin piano. And I taught myself to play. So when I went to music lesson, I'd already taught myself to read. And I was given a grade four piece. And I read it quite all right. And then I played for the Boys Brigade service at eight o'clock Sunday morning. And Later on in my life, I started playing for the morning service for the adults. Um, but Portland was rich in music. As I said, not many people had radios. And there's some times of the year where we had what were called campfires right on Titchfield Lawn. And the whole town went to campfire. <laughs> Crowds of people went to campfire and they played instruments that we sang, and some people did dance. The first time I ever saw um, a ballet dancer on points, right on the grass. <laughs> 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 she danced. But music was rich. We had a festival of arts, mm -hmm. which was second to none. And most people feel that that is the one that JCDC was built from. We had a good festival of music and drama and speech. We produced people like Eddie Ball. We produced the organist Oscar Watts, um, singer Roy Anderson. We produced um, dancers like Neville Black and Tony Valdez. So there was a lot of things that I went to as a child. But the festival was rich in that we had a syllabus, music syllabus, which was set by Mr. Tom Murray. Tom Murray was a Scotsman, and he was the British representative, what is it now? British Council. British Council representative. And he said, set the syllabus. And that's how I learned so much European music. <laughs> I knew a lot of arias from opera and from oratorios.
and it was very popular piano pieces. I knew a whole string of English, English songs. This was the sort of syllabus that was set. And we had solists. I remember one solist, Mr. Edwards, he always boasts about, when I did my recital at the ward, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was that sort of person. Um, I, up to now, can't play the prelude in C-sharp minor by Rachman enough. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't think I ever will. <laughs> and that is how musicians were judged. If you could do things like that, you were a musician. So when I came to Kingston, and I saw all these people who could play all the classics, and I could barely manage. I can still barely manage now, too. <laughs> but you um, went around from house to house, from road to road, and you see people with these brass plates on their gates. So and so, LRSM. You go to another place to say so and so, ARCM. And I come from, come from country, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what those letters meant. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I play the organ at Vineton Methodist Church, and I help with the choir there. But when I came to Kingston, I'd come in to teach at Arden High, and I taught economics and geography. And geography. Later, when Mrs. Vidal Smith, who was the choir mistress, gave up the job to start Mona Prep, I slid into this post for music director for the school. And I developed a choir. But of course, in those days, Arden was well known for music. For Mrs. Vidal Smith, a well known music teacher. And she preceded Lloyd Hall. <laughs> Lloyd Hall, who had discovered Joyce Britton at Arden. And so I had uh, to follow. <laughs> and, and I really did well with the choir. And that's how I got some sort of popularity as a choral director. And I'm going to hold you there, because I want people to understand that um, not only are you a composer, and, and Peter made a distinction between composer and arranger, <laughs> but a composer, a, you are a performer, not just of music, that he is really a performer. He has been in um, the theater, um, in plays, and, and you are a teacher of music par excellence, and that we will touch on shortly, right. and an athlete. Did you know? He's an, he was really an one, athlete as well. But I one, want, one eye man in a blind country. One, <laughs> <laughs> but I want people to understand, and you have given a little bit of the background about how it is you have been composing mu music um, in such a wide range of genres, um, including music for church, um, the, the Psalm 23 and 150 um, we heard earlier on, Psalm 24, Psalm 27, Psalm 150, Psalm 100. You compose music hymns. I think most people here would know about the right hand of God. Um, Lord, make me one, and I come to the cross to words by Dennis Scott. You have composed a lot of church um, music with, for Christmas, Christmas music, um, sing the chorus, um, which a lot of the young people love to, to do. Um, Jesus is born in a manger long ago, never a baby like Jesus. You have done music for theater, um, several pantomimes, um, um, several plays. You've done music for school songs. Um, so, um, there's a whole list here which I'd like to share. And special, you've been also specially commissioned to, to do music, to write music for particular places. Some of the music for theater, Cindy, by the Jamaica Children's Theater, Man Song, LTM Pantomime, Sip of Silver, River, River Moomin, the Golden Table, King Root, Brockins, all of those are pantomimes, um, Jumbi Jamboree, a Jim Nelson production, Bedward, a Louis Mara production, and he has just composed music for such a wide range of, of, um, of, of 
idioms, in such a right way of idioms. And so I wanted to ask you, Mr. Dexter, if you could share with people um, how your, your, your experience um, in all of these, writing music for all of these, how, how is it you have been inspired or motivated to compose music in such um, diverse? And there, there, there are two reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that I was prompted to write by who was my mentor, mentor, Professor Rex Nettleford. Mm -hmm. Prof always said to me, it's better we do our own thing than do the things from abroad, perform the things from abroad. If we continue to write <laughs> our own things, just keep going, it will get better. It will get better. It will get better. And I think one of the first things I wrote was a little piece of music dance sequence for a pantomime. And I think the NDTC still has it in the score for Plantation Revelry. Mm -hmm. You know, just a little part, which I borrowed from a junk on a song <laughs> <laughs> in Port Antonio. Um, I wrote a lot of the music for church because I think we wanted something more like our own music. And I remember the first thing I wrote First things I wrote were the two psalms that were sung here today. I did them for the St. Andrew Singers concert. What is it called? Um, St. Cecilia. Mm -hmm. Festival. S Festival, St. Cecilia Festival they had every year. And when Mr. Hall asked me to bring the Arden girls down to sing the two solo parts of I Waited for the Lord by Mendelssohn, I looked at the program he had sent me and I said, you know, this program needs a little... Carbonizing. <laughs> <laughs> to <laughs> make <it> something. <laughs> yes. And I wrote those two songs then. So they were written for the students at Arden. <laughs> and most of the things that I have written were written for the choirs which I work with. I worked at the University of the West Indies for a number of years, almost 40 years, and I directed the the university singers, and I did a lot of Christmas music instead of just singing in the bleak midwinter. <laughs> <laughs> Every Christmas, we, we, we sang things with a little rhythm, right? And um, I, I was asked to do things for pantomime. The first one I did, man's song. And then I did, I don't have the next one? Sipper Silver. Sipper Silver. Um, River Mumma. Right, Sipper Silver. And then the others I did along with Grub Cooper. He wrote some, I wrote some of the things for the pantomime. What Port, Port Royal Ho, I did. Yes. And we performed that right in Port Royal itself. There was a Carmen Tipling, um, Ted, Dwyer. Ted Dwyer production. <laughs> We did that there. Um, I did uh, the music for schools. Yes, I was going to ask you to share that with yeah. people. Um, some schools and universities um, commissioned, well, asked you to write their school song, mm -hmm. and you want to share that with them? Yes, I wrote a song for the University of the West Indies. It was not first selected when they had a competition. But it has become the university song now, and it's sung very regularly, and people love it. And I wrote a song commissioned by UTEC, so they also sing my song. The, the university singer, the university song is, there's a light that's rising from out of the West. And the UTEC song, building a future together. I also wrote a song, which I can't remember the title, for the JCF Peace Officers. Mm -hmm. And I hear that they still sing it whenever they meet. That's the Jamaica Constabulary Force. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. And what, what, what interests me is that a lot of the music I write, people still sing them. 
um, the right hand of God is the most popular Caribbean hymn today. Mm -hmm. The most popular. And it appears in the Anglican hymn book, it appears in the Methodist hymn book, along with other things which I have written. The, um, I must tell you the right hand of God. A number of Caribbean musicians were sent down to Trinidad and we stayed at Mount St. Benedict for a week. Which was like living in cloister. <laughs> it's a place where the monks lived. And they had us there writing music for the inaugural service for the Caribbean Conference of Churches. Of course, the people who wrote words, the poetry did at first. And then by about Wednesday, we had a number of different verses to choose from, different poems to choose from to write music. And after I submitted mine, the whole camp agreed that mine was the best. So it was sent up to the people organizing the service here to be sung at the first service of the Caribbean Conference of Churches. I don't know if the rhythm of right hand of God, the syncopation, frightened the person who was supposed to lead the choir. But that person put it aside and wrote their own. <laughs> and my friend Vivian Crawford always reminds me, don't worry, that song was sung only once. <laughs> It has never been sung again. <laughs> Whereas Right Hand of God has been copied in a number of books mm. and translated in different languages all over the world. In fact, <laughs> Mr. Dexter, you the syncopated Caribbean rhythms. Well, I grew up um, on that. Yes, and, and <laughs> as he's shared with us about his experience in Port Antonio, that um, now explains why he is so comfortable with the, the syncopations and the, the Caribbean rhythms. Because you have been writing things um, using the folk, the popular, mental rhythms, yes. um, Rasta rhythms, and so on. I knew a lot of Jamaican folk songs. Some of them which you can't sing <laughs> Marjorie would <laughs> in public. know about that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember um, <laughs> uh, the, the um, one which bands usually play, Cot Mono. Oh, no, no, no. Mm. <laughs> I, when I heard what that song was saying, it's, it's, it's related to the George. It was George V that abdicated to marry Wally, Wally, Wally Simpson. <laughs> and the song was, King left him thrown, he got caught mono. La, yo, caught mono. <laughs> and I, 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 never, I never heard it that way before. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you and, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's, <laughs> you have to um, remember that um, these rhythms are what I put in a lot of the music I write. And then I'm, Lilith probably was hinting at it, that I started out really in poetry and drama. I was an elocutionist in Portland, and I came to Kingston, and I was an elocutionist to in the festival. And I remember I was runner up to the island champion in the adult class for two successive, successive, successive years. And when I got the whole story, I think that I really won. <laughs> Be, because I later discovered that the person who beat me was coached by one of the judges. Oh. <laughs> and the, 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 the song, the, the, the poems that I, I did, nobody had ever heard me do them. I just did them on my own. And we were tied for the poetry section. We tied for the prose section. And he got one mark over me in the Shakespeare, one mark. Yeah. Right? 
Uh, so I have had that sort of thing, just as I, I had to turn back with the right hand of God. As I said, I, I, I try not to overstep my limits. So I would not attempt the preluding C sharp minor. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you wrote, so I'm happy I'm never complaining. Yes. But when life open up before me a door, <laughs> when, um, when one door closed, another one open. And if you can't find a door, jump through a window. Yes, <laughs> I started but, telling you about my thing with <laughs> writing, mm -hmm. with um, write, uh, performing verse and poetry. Yes. And I think that is what led me to become one who wrote lyrics. Because the song for UWI, the song for UTEC, and quite a number of the hymns that I wrote, I wrote not only music, but I wrote the lyrics right. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the university one goes from Caribbean islands, Guyana and Belize was born our University of the West Indies. A proud symbol of our oneness, of our strength in unity. With vision clear, clear you came along to shape our destiny. To follow after knowledge, the truth to seek and find. To teach us love and justice, to liberate the mind. And there's a chorus, there's a light that is shining from out of the West. And proud bearers of that light are we. So we follow those whose work has brought glory to your name, making a better world for you and for me. Yes. The, 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 um, the part of the university is a light shining out of the West. So I got that in. Mm -hmm. um, I still think that the most beautiful musical instrument is the human voice. Mm. Uh, there is nothing like that for me. When you are going to um, make, that is a platform on, uh, which is going to segue into my next question. And so um, can you just hold that thought because I wanted to mention to people here that Mr. Dexter is well known in Jamaica, the Caribbean and internationally as a musical director and conductor of choirs. Um, and he also teaches a lot. Um, he really is excellent at finding talent and develop, helping people to develop their talent. Now I want to ask you, what are some of the high points of your ongoing training at Westminster Co um, Choir College concerning choral music and extracting the maximum from the voice? All right, let me go to that. Mm -hmm. I, I studied music here at the School of Music. I did the LTCL mm -hmm. in class music teaching, taught by Barry Davis. And then I went on to Westminster Choir College in their summer sessions. Mm -hmm. I'd go every summer, spend a number of weeks, and it was there I, I learned choral conducting, choral writing, choral arranging, and I did a, quite a number of courses on the voice. The, 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 the teaching young children to sing, as well as mu music for the adult choir. In what I, I should tell you that I was married to one of Jamaica's greatest sopranos, mm. Beverly. Yeah. And, and, and I know what, every time I play a CD by Beverly, I still remark that very few Jamaican singers have come to this quality of voice. That's love talking there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, 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 it's, 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 after death, I realized that no, it's, it was really different. It was good. Mm, excellent. There, there was somebody from Jamaica who attended the Kiwanis Music Festival in Toronto. And she won the opera, she won the oratorio, she won the church solo. And two other prizes. The Rose Bowl. And she won the Rose Bowl as the best soloist for the compet in the competition. A Jamaican. But I said, voice is the, for me, 
the greatest instrument. And it's an instrument that you can't send for a tuner to fix it. <laughs> you have to fix it yourself. It's the only instrument you have to build yourself. And so I went to Westminster College, which was one of the top colleges in the States for vocal music. And I learned all these things. And it is my greatest joy to share with people who want to learn to sing. And more and more I'm, more and more I'm understanding really what it is, how to do it. Each time you, 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 do, you have a class, you're finding something new. Those of you who have been trained by Mr. Dexter to sing will know that he takes this as an academic exercise. And he, if you ever have one little niche or problem in your voice, let's say a passage or problem or something like that, he, class after class after class, you see him come in with knitted brow. Ah, I think I've found out exactly how to um, solve this. So he takes this almost personally. I suspect he doesn't even sleep because he's thinking about how to get um, Halliburton to do this or to how to get Lily to do that or somebody as you have thought. But Mr. Dexter, your life is so rich that as I told them that we could spend three hours, three no, months. Please don't. But I want to, there's something I want you to share with people. Um, I want to ask you, which has been your favorite genre or your most rewarding accomplishment? Mm -hmm. um, in your, in terms of your composition, that's a very yes. difficult question. To All answer. right, your most <laughs> rewarding accomplishment, accomplishment. Because if I read out to you the number of awards he has had, um, they are legion. He has been um, the Regional Ecumenical Award Cap for Carbon Composer Silver Musgrave Medal by the Institute of Jamaica, Order of Distinction by the Government of Jamaica, Staff and Consultant Award for Carbon Council of Churches, 60th Anniversary Award from Arden High School, Jamaica Music Industry Award from JAMI, Arden High School Special Award from the School Nexus Award, from the Nexus Performance Prime Minister's Award from the Government of Jamaica, Arden High School Alumni Choir Award, Philip Sherman. Sherlock Center Award from the UWI, and you have to hear this, please. Amcham Award um, from the American Chamber of Commerce, the Honorary Doctor of Letters from the University of the West Indies, and the Gleaner Honor Award um, for, from the Gleaner Company. You can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So I'm asking you, which has been his most rewarding accomplishment? If accomplishment means getting a medal, getting an award, I would know what to say. <laughs> because for me, I, would, I just do what I like. And it's people who reward me for what they have learned, for what they have gained. I, I really don't put anything special on anything. Some of, some of the awards I got have come a bit, have great, as great surprise to me. <laughs> you know? But I, I can tell you that some performances still live with me. Um, I remember the university singers in London conducted the choir there and another concert I remember is one all the way down in William William Nib. Where is that again? <laughs> Will, I think you mean con with it, the universe Alvin, singers in, in, in the church, in the Baptist church oh, there. Okay. The acoustics were out of this world. Mm -hmm. And when you lifted your hand and you heard that sound coming back at you. It was something else. I'll never forget that performance. That's you know, for me, that one of my, my, my high points. Mm -hmm. But then again, um, you find that um, I can even look back at when I was 
before my teen years, when I first had goosebumps listening to music, was in the Anglican Church in Port Antonio, when a group of rustic <laughs> countrymen came down from Belcastle, conducted by the former Governor General Howard Cook, and they sang the Finlandia. I remember that just melted. You know, it, as a little boy, I'd, it was something that I can't describe it the way I felt when I heard those man, men harmonize and sing that song. So we understand why more recently Mr. Dexter has started a male voice choir at the University of the West Indies. And they have had their <laughs> second performance. The first was in April and the second was just a few weeks ago. And thrilled um, the audiences as they heard the balance of those male voices that only he could manage to accomplish. But I'm going to end this interview on for, are you, he doesn't like to talk. Can you believe it? <laughs> and he doesn't like publicity. But yet in his profound humility, he continues to go about his business each day in a manner which confirms that he is not overly concerned with the levels of excellence that he has attained and the esteem in which he is held um, as a truly great Caribbean musician and musicologist. Noel George Dexter just goes about doing what he loves to do and feeling satisfied with the accomplishments just in himself, just feeling, just for the joy of doing these things. You are a precious, precious gem in the tapestry of our lives and we really are pleased to be a part of your world. Thank you, ladies.